What's going on, Michael? I'm chilling, man. Dude, it is Thursday night, 9 p.m. It is the Mike and Miss show brought to you by Mission Accomplished. Another outstanding episode tonight. We have a great guest. Is it Tulika Kakar? Straight out of Pakistan, straight out of Philadelphia, straight out of BKFC 17 with an amazing victory. Um, let's shout our sponsors real quick. We don't have anything to pull up on screen, but we're going to go ahead and say shout out to uh, Holden Hands Massage. Go to HoldenHandsMassage.com. They are a uh, veteran. They are registered with the VA. Um so if you're a soldier or a veteran, you go to go see your provider, get a referral, go to holdenhandsmassage.com and make make a uh, appointment with Jackie. And if you're not a soldier or a veteran, go to massagetherapics.com and you can do the same thing straight through Jackie. She's amazing. She'll find trigger points. She'll alleviate any pain in your body. She is a wizard. Trust me. I know. And killfootclothing.com. They are American made apparel. Veteran owned. They make this awesome shirt that you see me wearing right now. The mission accomplished t-shirt. Go to killfootclothing.com and get yourself a shirt. All right. With that said, we're going to go ahead and introduce a amazing guest, Mr. Isatula Kakar. Hello, sir. How are you? Hey, good evening. I'm fine. Thank you. Hey, what's up? Thank you, Mike and Mish for yes. having me. Yeah, welcome to the show. We're honored to have you on. Um, congratulations on your victory at BKFC 17. We were there ringside. Uh, you were fighting injured. We'll talk about that a little bit. But, you know, Chris Sorrow is no joke. And you yeah. went through it. So congratulations. Thank you. What was it like to fight? Here in America, after everything you've been through, what was what was the experience at BKFC seventeen like for you? Uh, BKFC, like the the, it's like uh, I I almost recover myself fifty percent after a long time, after many years, and the BKFC gave me the chance, and that's how I seen a lot of people. They were was like a family members. Like I feel, I was feel so like so happy after the fight and I seen many people, they love me and they, they shake a hand with me. Like, it's like I, 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 after a long time, I feel so happy. Yeah. yeah. It, it was an incredible performance and, and like, you know, you were relatively unknown. A lot of people didn't know you coming into here, but, but Chris Sorrow was a well-known, you know, figure in the BKFC and he's a, giant monster of a human of a man right so like people not knowing who you were and then chris sorrow coming down from heavyweight to 205 i don't know if a lot of people were like giving you the chance that you deserved and then you went out there and you proved everyone everyone wrong and you planted your flag in the bkfc so that was really something man yeah that was like when we was coming to usa and we had, they said, USA is land of opportunities. But I I was, uh, actually, I was struggling here to working and job. And then uh, finally, after eight months, they gave me the chance. So I was patient and yeah, it was good. And it all paid off. So yeah. at the, at the weigh-ins, but you know, the night before the fight, you go to the weigh-ins. Um, when you guys come out, you guys are, you know, kind of jawing at each other a little bit. Nothing too crazy. And then there was a handshake. And as you went to go walk away, um, I believe, you know, Chris kind of did like a little hold the hand quick thing. And uh, you guys got in each other's faces. Uh, what was going through your mind when that happened? Oh, uh, well, I was uh, actually I respect Chris Saro a lot. And because he has a family like me and uh, we chat and and uh, uh like uh, I was very stressed and I didn't tell to my coach about my dislocated shoulder and I was just act like I'm okay, but I was very stressed and yeah. So he talked and I talk and then he didn't let my hand. So I got angry. So wasn't that the arm that was hurt? Um, yeah, yeah, uh, because my shoulder was dislocated. Yeah. Right. So right to... hand, yeah. 
you yeah. have to play it off like it didn't hurt. Like you're just like, hey, let go of my hand, but it probably hurt like a son of a bitch. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't just, you know, I didn't realize to people. <laughs> well, yeah, you no. played it off. You played it off perfectly, and nobody knew you were hurt. You know, amazing. Yeah. Um, can we kind of just like start from the beginning? You you are from Pakistan, and you've been you have you been doing uh, combat sports your whole life? You started off kickboxing, correct? Yeah, I, I started Kyokushan Karate. I started, and then I moved to kickboxing. Yeah. So and, okay, go ahead, Mike. I was gonna say, so you did, you were born in Pakistan, and you were born. Were you born in uh, how do you say it, Balakistan? Balochistan, yeah. Balochistan. Balochistan. So that's where you're yeah. from. Uh, yeah. Explain to us how how your childhood was, where you were born, and and what you did when you were growing up. That kind of led you into um, fighting and all that. Uh, I actually have some pictures too that I can I can go through uh, of your yeah. of your country. Yeah, yeah. It's really I, incredible, I, actually. Yeah. So yeah, I, I live in Balochistan, and there is a, a village areas, and we where we call Kila Abdullah. So I born there, and. Uh, it uh, there is life is very difficult and very hard and people there they they just know about guns and the society is going to be very difficult just because of the government issues and like our Pashtuns communities they are very weak in Pakistan we we lost a mil uh, almost ten millions Pashtuns community in Afghanistan and Pakistan because of under political game uh, yeah so. So I am the first person in Balochistan and as a Pashtun and where I live, where I belong. So I'm the first person I was uh, moved to the city for two hours far away from the city. So I'm, I love the sports that time and my dad always supporting me. So I started there and every three months I go there to home and then just spend two days in the village. And my, uh, like my life was just to, I love to live in the city. No, not with the, even with family. So from the beginning, my life is struggling there. And so I, I, I was doing the sports and then I, I 2008 and I become very good uh, fighter in Pakistan and 2010. So I moved to the Pakistan National Wushu Kickboxing Team for somehow our Pashtun society and community, they are very ignoring in our, uh, the government is ignoring us a lot. Yeah. So I, uh, after six months, I kick it, I kick out from the Pakistan national team. So I was alone by myself. But my dad, my family always support me, and that was, and that's how I learn in the sports. So I should change my society, do something for my people. I'm the first person in my area where really four million people, no any sportsmen there. We don't have any education. We don't have schools. We don't have college. We don't have nothing. So that was my dream to do something for my family. So I've been to Iran and I've been to Dubai and I've been to Russia, Moscow. And so after that, so yeah, I just left my country for some reason. It's dangerous yeah. to live there somehow, like my kind of people, they want to do something for society. So I didn't know I will be, I will be left my family for many years. This is my ninth years. I, I didn't see my, any family member. It is hard. It is. I bet. Yeah. And is is like uh, is kickboxing like a big sport in Pakistan, or are you kind of yeah. an anomaly? Okay. Like uh, it? we are, we, uh, yeah, it is big sports in our Asia. They love sports, but when they see when they see that in the on the TVs, like on the big show, like like as a UFC, like as a now is Bernakal, and there is many fighters, many big shows. When uh, our country's people watch, they love sports, but there is not opportunities. Like the political things, they don't let to do the peace. So definitely I was, love the sports and like, you know, and that's how and one, one thing in the Pakistan team ignore me and then somehow reason when I left my country and then I've been more true in the detention center under Australia political game. Like I took my risk, my life risk. Few people, they can use that way to go to Malaysia and use the dangerous way, hidely cross the border on the water and come to Indonesia. And then after Indonesia, you, when there is few people, they can come cross the water to come to Australia. Before and 23 hours before my boat, we came in one boat, 93 people. 
before my boat, uh, 20, uh, 23 hours before my boat uh, uh, in the sea, we lost 86 people that, that day in 2013. So somehow we reached to the Australia on the water. It was hard. And then when we moved to by force and they put us in the handcuff, it's like we was a criminal, but not. It was a political game because mm -hmm. the Australian government, the Labour and the Liberal Party, they used the politics and they took us to the move to the Papua New Guinea and Manus Island. And there was, it was a horrible life. It was. Man, I, I'll tell you that I have, I've read articles and I just can't wrap my head around that. I just can't even, under, I, it took me like, so much to understand what the hell was going on over there and I, uh, so because you went into the country on a boat that's why they detained you that's the whole like like i really don't uh, understand how, how does that work is, yeah the thing is like in australia millions of people they came by boat when any country to someone came to the country they have the rights to you they have to asylum and they have to process and they have to give the after after almost there is no any things to you can put the person after six months. Only six months is allowed in around the world. But somehow the Labour and the Liberal Party in the Australia government, they move us to the Papua New Guinea. And as a Manus, the Manus story is very different. Manus Island is very expensive. They keep the border. They keep, they, they have thousands of armies there. For what reason? Not for us. They're doing own things, but we don't know. Still no one can understand why, what's going there. That's how they move there and they give, they use the money to Papua New Guinea country. They spend $10 billion, you can find out, you know. And that's how the politicals, we lost many people by suicide, by by cutting self. Every day we we seen different, different things there. We didn't learn anything. We didn't, they, like they, we lost, uh, like, uh, like I lost eight years. I didn't like when sometimes I'm, I'm going very emotional, like why, what's happening? why I was like this and why we so don't it was, it was confusing. It was confusing times. For it you. was confusing. Like you, didn't, you didn't know it was. why. Yeah. I can't even believe it. It's just, that's such an incredible story. And you, were you able to train? Like, I know that you, you continued to train while you were there. Correct. I was the first person. I, I, I become. Oh. I knew that and that's why how I teach the people inside in the camp and we have many people and strong people there. So and then after five years, I was the first person I, I ran away from the detention center to Papua New Guinea City. And I got behind people and some lawyers and they put in my like, you know, and they cannot take me to back to the Manus that time because I was have some journalists, they support me. So, and that's how I started uh, training in Papua New Guinea city. And I was representing refugees against Australia. What, why we are like this. So, yeah. Man, that is uh, really tough. I, I, I read a whole bunch about um, the Manus Island and what happened there and the people that you lost there. Uh, I know one person was like beaten by soldiers and, not, not, definitely yeah. not something. Yeah, something we beat easy. we beat uh, a lot of time. We beat it by locals and by security guards. We uh, we we they they abused us all the time. The security guards and uh, they published to us to the Papua New Guinea countries. They said we are people criminals. We are people rapists. We are people whatever. That's how they. My point is that's how in politicals in the politicians they use the human beings on the political way for the wrong reason. That this is so wrong. This is so wrong. Like around the world, you know, that's mm -hmm. how. Like you, you can see the world destroyed many countries. They have millions, millions of refugees. So it is hard. It is hard. It is hard. Like you know. Yeah. Now, if you don't mind, can we show our audience a little bit of the living conditions that because it, it blows our mind, like us here in America and welcome to America, my man. I, I hope you stay here for a long time and I hope you bring all your love. Not a long here. time, forever, forever, for, forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, man. yeah. Bring, bring, bring them all over here. And, you know, we welcome yeah. everybody. And we're so happy that you're here. 
and you're doing your thing. It's it's incredible. Um, if you don't mind, we wanted to show everybody. I'm like, happy. I'm happy to people learn something. Everybody sure. know to we know we have to share. This. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I'll play it. And if you want to talk and, and, and talk us through it, there'll be a little bit of audio and, yeah. um, and we'll go through it and we'll, we'll show yeah. the audience what kind of living conditions that you had to survive in for a long time. So here we go. Yeah. This is toilet and shower. Yeah. 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 As you see, there is no water, the shower is not working. As you see, this tap is also not working. There is no water here. And the toilet is... It was every time. Without sharing. Yeah, we live 600 people and... Two bunk beds up and down. There is no so, water here. And wait the, a minute, so, I'm sorry. What? How many people were there? We live, uh, we was total in 1,600 people in Manus Detention Center. And there was four camps in each camps, like 400 in some camp is uh, 500 in some camp is like, you know, 600. So it the small rooms. It was very hard. You cannot believe very hard. People get like we, we, we was, we don't have power. Even in the hand, we don't have, like we, we, we didn't feel anything. And like that's how when the uh, the the governments when they keep the people in the prison life, and they have the professional armies, retired armies, and they know how to how to handle the people, how to give the foods, what they give in the foods, they don't feel the power, they just live as you cannot believe. Like like I wasn't feel I was a human being. Honestly, I never feel that time. Damn. <laughs> It's so the, freaking breathtaking, dude. It's fucking. I mean, sorry. I, it's just crazy. I can't. It even is crazy. That shit. So this it next. Is crazy. Yeah. Now let, let's throw it back on for a second because. Safe in case if there's no rain, we used to drink. Water. So, so this is drinking water, right? Yeah, yeah. We. It's uh, about twenty. We saving the water and we doing the things. Uh. I was so, very good survivor to bring the things from the town, small town in Manus Island. Go by boat and took the risk every time. Couldn't get water from them, so we moved to this side. Yeah. It's, first they went with that because they, the water is so they didn't provide you guys any kind of drinking water or anything. You had to you had to get it on your own. They cleaned the water. No, they didn't. So, they they. They 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 pro they provide before somehow little bit, but they just keep us alive, as we just feel you know we have some bread, some to stay, and we never use the good clothes there. The clothes is uh, for years, for years. So, so now, that's how. What are we looking at right here? Yeah, it's we cooking something, we, and and that's you. We have. Yeah, right. That's me. That's you. Look yeah. at that handsome man. <laughs> <laughs> Un, so, a future champion, right there. You see, a, a future champion powering through all this. So you future built, you guys champion. built a grill out of a bed spring. Right. Yeah, and the human rights. They are they tried to change our policy, the Australian policy, the Australian people. How the politicians. Uh, I don't know what's happened to Australia. Why, like, why they, why they did this to the to us, and why they are doing with the refugees? And Australia should not forget the refugees build Australia. And but I don't know. I don't know what's going in the world. Not only I'm talking about Australia. There is a lot of countries they have refugees. They treat the people very hard. They 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 treat the people very wrong. This is this is this is unacceptable. Oh, you're right. It it's is. inhumane. Like you said, it's inhumane. You're not being treated like human beings. I don't know. I don't know why, why why the politicians are doing different things, why they are separating us, why they are separating, why they are changing the our difference, putting our names, Muslims, colors, black and white. This is all politicians. This is social media. They're doing these things, mm -hmm. honestly.
It, well, because they're sitting pretty, you know, it's, it's hard, you know, they're sitting in them satin sheets. They don't have to worry about that, you know? So it's really when they're not there in that position, they're just like, eh, whatever. They forget about even people who live in lower and move to middle class tend to forget what it was like in the lower class. Or if they move up to, you know, upper class, they just forget they start living this life and then they forget like, Oh wait, these are human beings. Or I used to go through this. And and some people didn't go through anything. They, they, they were, they were born with a they, silver spoon. They, they just don't understand. They don't understand. I, no. I have a quote quick uh, from you. Sorry. Sorry, Kyle. No, go um, ahead. That you said, I lost my memory in this place. I can't remember my past and I can't think about my future. The future for us is the next day. Will we survive? That's your, that's your uh, mindset while you're there. Yeah, when I was there, so uh, it was like I lost everything. Like honestly, when you're in the prison life, when you're missing your family, and then like it, like you know, our life is difficult from your lives, from the people life where they are living here. They have families, they have family members, they have mother and they have father. When you're far away from family, your life is will be difficult every each day. Every each day, your life is difficult, not like normal people. You have so many thoughts and you have so many feelings. And without family, people, I don't know. Like, now, is it tool? Do you have brothers and sisters and do you have like a big family? Yeah, I have big family in Pakistan and I have and a lot of cousins and I have my uncles. And when I did this BKFC fight, can you believe that in my life, this that was the first time my family watched live my fight. That's, they did. How, that's how I'm very happy from BKFC, honestly. They did. They watch live my fight and my the village people, they watch my fight and then they support me and the money people came to my house to congratulation to my my family that's how the changing is coming that's how and people are very supporting me something is coming to my area and the people will be changed from the guns things and when i say to my interview you can see you can see in my facebook and and like I, a lot of people following me on facebook like so that's what i'm doing the things for them it's awesome man and and can you explain how did you end up finally getting out of Manus Island? Like what was the, what, what changed that got you out of there? Uh, to where? To USA? Yes. How did you, how did you get from Manus Island out of Papua New well, Guinea and over to the United well, States? Well, we came, uh, actually, I, 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 like the people don't know why we, like how we came to USA. And this is also the one thing we came to USA because of, uh, uh, Barack Obama said, uh, the previous president, uh, he was told to Australia, don't treat these people wrong. This is, uh, they told to Australia, the Barack Obama said, don't treat these people wrong. They are human beings. And that's how they make the deal. And the immigration said, yes, we will take these people one time. We will see the immigrants, uh, immigration process. So that's how they choose the people. And they brought to USA from the Manus to the USA almost 500 people. And then the other countries, they took the, the, the uh, uh, like, you know, the money people went to different countries and most people, they came here to USA. So, <clears throat> so when you were, when you were released, you got to choose where you wanted to go? No, no. I, I, uh, I, I, I got the interview from the USA. Okay. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, so that's how process went. And I've been to the process and then. I came, so yeah. Yeah, absolutely incredible. It's so crazy <laughs> that you went through all yeah. this, and now here you are, sitting pretty right now. You got a win under yeah. your belt, and you're safe. You don't have to wake up thinking, "Where am I going to get my water? Am I going to get electricity anytime soon?" Is somebody going to chase me with a bat? Is somebody going to beat me while I'm sleeping? Is someone going to steal my... I just... Having all of that, like, lifted off your shoulders now and being able to wake up, uh, I can imagine, like, how long How long did it take you to, to kind of get your mind right and not have to have that, like, survivor mindset when you're waking up in the morning every day? You know, I'm sure you still 
probably have yeah, some. Yeah, I'm still uh, like, uh, like I'm still. Sometimes I'm not following the rules here in USA. Like uh, uh, I'm not following the rules, and I I don't want to stay in the line. I don't want to do something. So that's why because we were staying in the line for for hours hours in the big line to get the dinner and eat the foods. Yeah. You probably have a little pe like me and him. We're we're military people. We deal with like our fellow soldiers, people with PTSD. You go through tough times and you go through you know traumatic events, and it affects you for the rest of your life. But now you're here and you're in Philadelphia, correct? Yeah, I'm in Philadelphia. Now let me ask you this: How are the people in Philadelphia? Oh, everywhere, everywhere is people good to me, honestly. Everywhere. Just, I was just joking around because we're New Englander. We're like up by Boston and we're like big rivals with Philadelphia. You know what I mean? And sports and everything. You know, we always we always bust on the Philadelphia people. But yeah. it is the city of brotherly love. Correct. <laughs> yeah, I love Philly and I love every state. That's so now that you're in America, what's like one of your favorite things to do? And uh, also what food is something you like to get? Like you go and get Philly cheesesteaks. Like what, what what are your favorite things to eat and do now that you're in America for fun? Uh, I'm I'm in a good shape. I'm cooking my, my food <laughs> so I can cook like Pakistani foods. And uh, I, I have many brothers here from my uh, Manus people. You know, there was also from Manus, they are here. So we was doing all job and currently I'm not doing job. I, I need the fight. So they are doing the job. So I'm just happy to do one fight. You were you were truck driving, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Did and you you uh trained to be a truck driver when you got here or was that something that you had already done back in Pakistan or anything like that? No, I, I, I never did, but um uh, when when uh I just uh, the case manager told me when I was in North Carolina they said Hey, you should do the uh, the truck driving. It's 19, the people are struggling, like they need help. I said, wow, I need to do something. USA brought me here. I love to do something hard. So I was yeah. doing and I was, yeah. And I was you following Nate Shock and Nate Shock and some other BKFC people too in the Facebook, in truck, with truck driving too. So that's how I got the fight. All right. So now that you're here, you're you've got yourself uh, a place to stay. You got you got a good gym. Uh, what do we what do we to expect from Isatula Kakar? How is your shoulder, and how soon can we get, see you back in the ring? Uh, my shoulder is okay. I I checked three doctors. They said you're okay. You're feeling well, but you should not fight. That time we would dislocated shoulder. Even every doctor told me like that. I said. It was happened, but no more. So now my shoulder is okay. I just need the fight in July. So that's my last dream to do something for my people with Ham Guzali. So, yeah. Is that fight definitely happening? Or are you guys just trying to work work on it and promote it <sighs> until it happens? I need that fight. I want to something new to the BKFC. I want to something new. I The BKFC people should trust me. I want to new. I want to bring some new thing to the BKFC. We we have issue, Pakistan and Muslim countries with Israel, and how what's going in the Palestine. So I will be the I will be the third person, and the Ham Guzal is from Israeli. So uh, it, it, this that's how I want to I want to give a good message to my people, and uh, and uh, Palestinian people, and we want to make a peace. We want to show something in the ring. This will be the first time. Uh, in the history, we are doing the fight Pakistani and Israel. Our people they don't fight with the with the Israel because they uh, our Muslims do doesn't like Israel. That's the fact, mm -hmm. you know. And that's how we have a big issue on the political, and and that's what we. I, I'm like I wish the BKFC bring some ambassador from Pakistan to represent Palestine, and the, some ambassador come to from Israel. They talk on the table in the BKFC. Something will in, the the change will come. The change will come, and the Muslims and the Israel will not hit each other. Some people will change and understand we are human being. That's what I'm trying. That's what I need. That fight. And and you and Gazoli, are you guys friendly with each other? You guys have talked, and you guys. Uh, want to... We just we just did today face interview with Pakistani okay. media. 
Yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, we just did interview with Face and him, Gozali want also fight and I want also fight. And we want, to, we want to give a peace message to our Asia countries. That's how the thing is going wrong. And the, the media and the politicians, they are using more our people on the wrong track. It is, isn't, it, isn't it so amazing that you and him can bring your two nations together through such a violent sport? You know what I mean? It's like you guys are coming together peacefully, friendly with each other, but you're going to punch each other in the face with bare knuckles and put on a show for everybody. But it's, to, you know, to show peace between the countries. You know what I mean? I already, I already took my risk. This is a risk for me if I do fight with, his, with the Ham Ghazali. Definitely my uh, my Pakistani people and some Muslims will get made to me. They will angry to me. And because we, the uh, our people hurt more, our people been through, and we lost a lot of Muslims in around the world. And that's what I'm trying to change to something to give a good message. Hey, we are all human beings. That's that's my mission. So uh, believe me, these fights will go, uh, this, these fights will be exposed around the world, and especially in our Asia and Pakistan. So, uh, yeah. Incredible. It is incredible. So Ghazali is like a huge fan of Batman, right? So what superhero are you? You guys fight each other. Uh, he he's strong and he's a uh, expert and he's an experienced person in the sports career. So uh, yeah, for me it's easy. I want to take easy because I have to just keep distance. That's it. He has a gri grappling very strong, you know. Yeah, well, I would say you, it should be like Superman versus Batman, because I know that guy's like way into Batman. He's got videos. <laughs> he got Batman tattoos, and <laughs> like, yeah, uh, yeah. We saw him fight over in Knucklemania back in February. Uh, did you see that fight? Yeah, yeah, I saw his fight. Yeah, he fought McAllister. Yeah. So, I hope you get that fight really soon. Um, you haven't no, nothing from Nate Shook, huh? You nothing from him saying, "Hey, yeah, we're gonna give you a fight July, August, maybe." Yeah, nothing. I hope so. I hope so. They they they, they will give us BKFC. Like my, this BKFC should bring something new to we we do something on the human rights way. So this fight I'm doing for the human rights way. I'm right. trying to do this fight to. It's very strong with a good message. So definitely the our generation and some the young generation and the young people and some our Muslims will become cooled down and we will explain we we like you know we will do something good and that's how you know we have politician politics issue otherwise we are all human beings. Go ahead, Mark. Who, who who's your do you have a management team? Uh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't I didn't know if you have a management team uh, or, or not. I don't have nothing. I don't have sponsors. I don't have nothing, and I'm still. I use my own money, and I last time I used my own money, I never had any things from any person. But I wish I have a good management. So yeah. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying to find something with the honest people because uh, I am like I don't want to hurt more. That's it. I don't want to. So you're interested. The, you're interested yeah. in having a manager. Uh, I'm interested because I need without management, I cannot use more my own money. Like, mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm a labor. I use my own money. I get borrowed from friends, from my friends. I survive somehow. Somehow it's hard, mm -hmm. you know. But yeah, that's what I'm, I'm trying to do. That's what I'm trying to do is. Yeah. Well, anyone out here, anyone out there watching, let's get this man paid. Let's get him some sponsors. You're a super marketable person. You got a great look. You have a great fighting style. You obviously can put on a show once you get in the squared circle. I mean, what's not to love about you, man? It's just cra crazy. You, you need to get yourself a manager and get yourself paid. That's for sure. And you're driven. That's for, <laughs> you're not going to give up. I know that. Right, is it so? So Mike and I are both U.S. military. We're both in the army, and like, you know, personal courage, uh, you know, resilience. Uh, they drive that into us. That's what we pride ourselves on. You are basically that, you know, personified man, and we we really appreciate you. And and we're so sorry about the the long journey that got you to America, but. You're here now, and it, and it's time for you to shine, man. I'm so happy. I'm so happy to be here, and that's like USA give me everything. That's all. The what I was looking for freedom, so I have now. That's it. 
So now I have to do represent USA in my country and do something good in my life. Yeah. It's, it's uh, you know, we got nothing but good things to say, man. Um, Mike, what else you got? You, what do you want to, what do you want to say, man? So, I, I mean, I think, I think we, we've said it all here. Uh, I, I think you kind of leave us speechless because you have a story that it, it, it hits pretty deep, you know, and <laughs> Just to, I can't even fathom being locked up basically like that for so long and having to travel for so long. And then you you travel to get to that and then you have to stay there for so long. So, I mean, I, that story is just kind of breathtaking, really. I, I, I uh, man, I give you a lot of props for for surviving through all that. And then here you are uh, in the US and, and living your dream, not giving up, man. So kudos to you. Uh, we, ha we, have a, we have a question from the audience. Um, do you get, nervous before i mean oh not that one I never heard these two speechless before yeah there you go is until <laughs> yeah he never heard us two speechless we never shut up but um do you ever get nervous before fights you know you've been through so much do you get nerves uh everybody's get nervous but i i like the i'm not really because i have uh i have feelings i have to do something and I fight for my own feelings, like why I've been through, and I fight for justice, and I fight for for a uh, for a kind of nice way to change my people, and that's how, like I I nervous little bit, not a lot, not not really. There you go, man. Nerves of steel. You know, you go through enough, yeah. and uh, you, you, there's not a challenge you can't take. You know. Resiliency yeah. to the T, like Larry says. Resiliency to the T. Um, you gonna make it down to Florida for uh, this next card? Uh, when twenty six June? Yes. yes. Um, no, I cannot. I don't have to do. I, I don't have money. I don't have. I cannot travel. Like you know, it's hard. Mm -hmm. So, I'm just yeah. Mm, Understood, man. Understood. All right. Well, you know what? This has been an eye opener for everybody. We wanted to get you an opportunity to come on here. We wanted to show everybody like the stuff you went through. Your fight was absolutely incredible. And you're in. I wanted to tell you, though, you fought at 205 pounds, correct? Yeah. So why why are you listed at 165 pounds on like every website I look you up on? You're you're one and one. On every website, no. but we but we know no, for that's not me. That, that's not me. That uh, he's from Afghanistan. I never used in one hundred eighty six. He's from Afghanistan. Yeah, he, it's he funny. Can the flag. Yeah, the, but the, uh, it's funny because they have your Chris Sorrow fight on that guy's record. It, right. And it, it's we're like we're, me and Mike. We're looking at it. We're like that can't. That's not him. The records all the yeah, records wrong. I don't know that, but I'm also confused in my like. Uh, I I have my uh, uh, WKF title i have record in google and i have uh i have uh, my uh, mma record with the ugb mma and that's how i i have issue and every time i call him them so with philippine i have some problem with them i don't know why they are not putting so that's how but i have my four mma videos that's what i want so yeah yeah absolutely uh yeah, man, you're a warrior. And like like I said, we were doing our due diligence. We were reading up on you. We were watching videos. We were like checking your record and everything. And we're like, man, I was like, Mike, this friggin' dude is not 165 pounds. I don't know. I <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I, and that's what uh, the BKFC, they, they got from me the record. So I, I seen my all the MMA videos and that's how they, they put me on the right way. So I have my all MMA videos, the fights. Yeah. So. Now, you were a world champion kickboxer at what age? Uh, I won the title. I won the title kickboxing from the undefeated champion in Papua New Guinea. That's how I, uh, I, I was fighting for my refugees. I was hiding in the city. I was living there after five years in the detention center. I ran away. And that's how I started start the sports. And I did two bo uh, three boxing fights. And amateur, I won. And then after that, they gave me title kickboxing fight with the undefeated champion. So that's how I won the fight. And I have still the video. I knock out him in the first round. I'm actually very good in kickboxing. So I won the K1 title from him. Now, would you want to um, 
Are you bare knuckle all the way now, or would you take MMA fights? Would you take kickboxing fights over uh, here? Like, I don't know because I don't have management, but uh, I I just want to fight. I, I, I'm very good. Like, I, I love to fight MMA. I love to fight kickboxing. But I want, like, as a freedom from the from the from all the federations, like, the BKFC uh, should understand my life and my feelings, and they give me the freedom I can fight anywhere, and the other federation I can fight anywhere. That's what I'm scared. Like, if I fight somewhere, might be BKFC ban me there. I cannot more fight there. And that's what I'm scared, you know. Just I want freedom in the fighting life. So because this, if I get the freedom life in the fighting life, I can fight anywhere, MMA and go kickboxing, go bare knuckle, go anywhere. So that's w what will be the, the the good things. I will be change some people. I will be fighting for no human rights. That's what I love to do something to change, to bring some some new things to make my society. So should the uh, the every federation understand me, why I am fighting, what I'm doing back to Pakistan. And that's how I'm changing my society and my province. They are struggling, and this will be how good for me. Incredible, man. Like like Megan says in the comments there, we definitely need to get you a management team. We need to – people like we know a lot of people, you know, people watching here know a lot of people. We need to get you a management team, man. We need, we need to get you paid because uh, you have tons of talent, tons of heart. You're a great human being, and you're an inspiration to millions. So uh, God bless you, my man. Uh, we we put your social media uh, tags at the bottom. We got Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok. Um, is there is there anything else that you want to put out to the to the audience that they can follow you on? Is that is that about it? No, that's what I have. You you found everything about me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. All right. Well. Kyle, you get anything else? I mean, like, I, like, like I said, um, I find myself almost speechless when when I talk to a person like yourself because I've never really talked to. I mean, we've been on like I've been on deployments and I've talked to you know, you know, the locals and the places that we go to, and but nobody, uh, nobody I've ever talked to has ever gone through a situation like you have to where you were detained for seven years, like unlawfully for no reason whatsoever that anybody can fathom, like why the hell you were being held, you know, and, and to have, you know, so much talent and not be able to really expand on it in those seven years, you were held back, you know, who knows what you could have been by now if they didn't take those seven years from you. You know what I mean? You were robbed. Yeah. You were robbed of a portion of your life that you deserve to get back. And I would love to see you get hooked up with a great management team here. Um, get yourself some sponsor money, get yourself paid, get yourself a living and maybe get, you know, your family members over here too. So they can, they can enjoy the fruits, the fruits of your labor as well. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, that's all I got to say, man. I want to give you an opportunity to go ahead and shout out whoever you want to shout out. This is your moment to say whatever it is you want to say, you know, don't hold back, say whatever you want. And then we'll let you, uh, let you get going, man. Oh, well, I'm happy from USA and I'm happy from people here. And I'm actually very happy to, I cannot, I don't have words to thank to the, all the BKFC people, how much like I'm happy and how much they give me happiness. And that's how I recover my, I am recovering myself in the BKFC. But yeah, my request, I need the fight with Ham Guzali. He's angry and I'm angry. We want to fight. We want to bring something new in the BKFC. Not only if we are just fight for people fight for money and for social media and no, we, they should understand our feelings and our people going a uh, very in tough situation. We need to change. We, we need to give them a good message for our fight with the Israeli and with Pakistani. And that's how the thing is going very bad in our countries they hate religions and they hate the people each other and that's what i am i'm trying to change them i need the social media should focus on these things and so that's my request from the big fc from the people yeah beautiful man and, yeah well we'll be down there um we'll be down there 
in, uh, June 26th to, to, to cover BKFC 18. And we'll make sure that we uh, you know, whisper something in some people's ears as they're walking <laughs> by, you know? Yeah. You know, we, as people walk by, we'll just go Kakar, you know, and just put a little, just put a little something in their air. Maybe they hear it subliminal, you know, uh, subliminally, and and they'll be like, oh, I don't know why I keep thinking about a car for some reason. So I, I'll be whispering <laughs> in in their ear all night. So don't worry, I'll get, yeah. I'll get, I'll get you out there. We'll 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 tell some people out there, and we'll we'll actually see if we can find a management team for you, man. Hopefully, we will do our we'll do our due diligence for you, my friend. Like Joe Ivy says, you have a great message, Isatula, and we want to thank you so much. You've been. I, I want to let you know that your face has been your 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 face has been frozen on the screen for probably 15, 20 minutes, but your voice is crystal clear and everybody heard every yeah. single word you were saying. I, I don't know yeah. what's happened to my video. I don't know. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's all right, man. It, the 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 important thing is that everybody heard what you had to say. Um, mm -hmm. you, you know, you're an inspiration to all, and we thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, thank you, brothers. Thank you. All right. Hopefully, next time we will see you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. 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 Hopefully, we'll see you maybe in July. Yeah, hopefully. All right, Have a all good right, night. Man. Love you guys. All you right, you too, man. Take, Take care. Easy. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Mike, dude, I I don't even know what to say, dude. That, <sighs> that that's that is of all the people I've ever talked to in my entire life, that that guy might have been through the most. I don't know. I just like I. How about you? Yeah, I so I've been really like looking into him and and looking at his hometown and and uh, you know uh the province that he grew up in and and then i was looking at the trip that he had to take on a boat uh twice so he went from there to malaysia and then you know on a boat again and as you heard he said how many people died 83 80, or, 83 or i'll have to go back and watch. it was 80 something for sure oh my god so so he went through that and then he has to go he thinks he's gonna go somewhere and and maybe get asylum and they're like nah we're gonna put you over here on this island it's gonna be shitty for years and years and years and you and i read about the people who got killed there yeah. i read about people getting beaten to death there from locals from security guards i read that they come in and they would steal their shit if they had nice shit soldiers would come in and just take their good shit oh do you guys have a refrigerator let me take that swear to god that's what they did they would just come and steal their stuff so they had Where's nothing dude i i just i held myself back from swearing for 47 minutes that is so fucked up in these the those fucking those guys those soldiers they shouldn't be called soldiers if that's what the fuck they were robbing these guys of all their fucking shit before deterring deter uh detaining them oh, does that not make you fucking so mad it oh makes yeah it's so fucking mad yeah it definitely oh, makes God. me pissed and and then like i i get like real deep like when i start watching this shit i start trying to like put myself like into it Dude. and i start thinking like how he felt and how the other families are there and some people are there with their kids and like i can't imagine like my daughter suffering and there's nothing i can do about it and you know you just have to try to survive i mean there's something you can do but it's like minimal you know it's you can't give them what, they, what you want to give them it's very awful um and i see that your sister said and that's why people kill and there was a guy right. that that they were saying was unstable and he needed help and, blah, 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 blah. and i don't know who if he hurt anyone i'm sure he did but he ended up committing suicide there and there was another guy who got beat in the head with a spiked bat to death and then the 15 people stomped him out and dropped a rock on his head so it is some crazy stuff and he was there for all of that shit he was there for all of it. He fucking fought through it. And, and dude, he fucking got out of there in 2020. And then uh, April, tw or what was it, May? May 2021? Yeah, we were down there in May, right, in Birmingham? No, we're in May right now. April. Fuck. No, we're in June now, baby. June 3rd. God damn, all the months are fucking. It was in, it was in May. It was in May. April yeah. 30th, we went to... No, April 30th was Alabama. So it was it was April and May. We were there at the end of April, beginning of May. Yo, so for those people that are, are, are hanging in there, I, I want everyone complaining. Yeah, Amy says, I want everyone complaining about their life in the U.S. to watch this. Exactly. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, it's, it's bananas. You guys want to see like where he comes? Like, check this shit out. Yeah, like, you want to show the map? It, yeah, show them, dude. My, All right, my, I'll my, go through it. Go through these pictures because we were All we right. were looking at these pictures and it's really crazy, man. It's just fucking nuts. 
I wanted to bring it up when he was talking and I mentioned I had some pictures, but he started talking and stuff and I don't want to like cut him off. So just kind of let him go. Yeah. So this is the area he's from. Uh, it's the largest province out of the four provinces that are in Pakistan. So it's bordered by Iran and, and Afghanistan, right? So here's uh, some mountain and desert area that uh, is there in Balochistan. And yeah. um, here is a sphinx. It's not the sphinx, but they don't know whether it's man-made or if it's natural. I was trying to look into it, but I didn't have much time. Uh, to really look into it so that's kind of crazy didn't even know that existed and then this is the capital keta and um there's some of the city there and then here is that's you from up in the mountains that, so that's where he's from look at that's the city how, i think he dude, said he went to but he didn't name it but it's it's so piled into one little valley it's just crazy to me the yeah that looks awesome I got that's say. nighttime yeah, and that, this, that looks, looks and then like, here's this awesome picture after it snowed it's pretty amazing uh yeah it's just i don't know man it, it it's like me we've been overseas we've been in the middle east and um you know no bullshit it's 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 really fucking eye opening to see different parts of the world. Americans have it. We have it so fucking good here in the United States and people don't fucking get it, man. They don't, they do not understand how awesome it is. This is, this is another reason why I say like everybody should do a couple years in the military after they get out of, the, get out of high school. One, because you're not smart enough to be an adult yet. And whether you think you are or not, you haven't had enough school and you haven't had enough life experiences. Get in the military and deploy somewhere and go fucking do something and see some parts of the world and see what other people have to go through because we got it pretty goddamn good, man. It's fucking nuts to me. Yeah. And I'm not hating on like, so like other people's culture, some people live that way and they, that's fine because that's just the way they grew up. So they think that they had the best of what they, they have, you know, like this is what I have and they make the best of it. They don't think of anything else. You know what I mean? You're just like, you're in, when you're in the situation, that's where you are and that's what you know. But like if, when we were, were in Kuwait and I was, you know, just when we'd have to go to Ali Asalim and drive over there and drive back for whatever reason, the road like there's no standards on the road. Like I feel like the, 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 the signage and the barriers and the lights, like I swear to God, we're driving down the road and we're flying and people are just whipping by you. And I swear to God, they're going like a hundred miles an hour. It's crazy. And you, I counted cars that were crashed on the side of the road between, this is like an hour ride, let's say about an hour, a little over an hour, right? 60, three cars were broken down on the side of the road. Like they just crash and they're just, who knows? They, Some of them they just, just break down them. With a, and they just leave them there and then get in a, in a taxi and then let's go get another one, I guess. I don't know. And they just leave it there. And uh, there's parts where there's construction going on, right? There's parts where there's construction going on. And I swear to God, one time where, where I'm driving with Chuck, right? And we're, we're riding and all of a sudden he's, he's just like jams on the brakes. And I was like, scared the shit out of me. And there was like Jersey barriers. And I swear to God, there was Christmas lights hanging from the Jersey barriers. Like there was no street lights. It's all sand all over the road. So we're flying down the road. There's a highway. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden we come to these Jersey barriers and there's Christmas lights on them. I swear to God, oh, yeah. like Christmas tree, like little tiny lights. And some of them are the flashing kind. So some of them are out. Other ones are on. And I was like, what kind of? what kind of direction do we have here? Like we, we could have just went right into a barrier. I mean, it was awful, dude. I can't even imagine like, and there, but there's no, there's no like standards the, really. There's no FDA. There's no, that it, it, it's different. It's different. It, 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 I'm spoiled being here. You know, we're, we are spoiled. Right. And, look at, look at uh, the tents. Like, what about the yeah. tents, Kyle? The tents, the, the tent, everything, the, the it, like, it, like, like in the trash everywhere. Let's just, everywhere. Like, like, let's just be honest. The we smell have, of we have a really good burning. and, uh, Sulfur. Someone, 
Joe Ivy, not at all. Let me see. I guess they don't believe in pollution. No, they don't. No, they don't believe in pollution at all. And like Danielle said, and, and Danielle Betrago said in the comments a little earlier, yup, ungrateful and ignorant. That is a perfect way to describe about half of the United States, man. You guys have yeah. no three quarters of the United States have no idea how fucking good they got it. It's just crazy. And then you get a guy like him who was just trying to get the hell out of Dodge, got on a boat, thought he would get a si uh, you know, have asylum in fucking Aust Australia. 86 people die on the boat on the way over there. And then when he gets there, they fucking chain him up and throw him in man Island. I just can't even get it. I don't have know. you seen the show Vikings? If anybody has of watched the so. show Vikings, I'm not going to spoil anything. I'm not going to say who, but they get on these boats. And obviously we know back then there ain't no Garmin. You know what I mean? They jump in the boat. They think, hey, we're going to the Golden Land. Somebody <laughs> told us a fucking story that was probably made up or in a dream. And they think no they're going Garmin. to find some fucking awesome ass island that's going to have like, I don't know, gold and food and trees. And they have no idea where they're going to end up. Stand up in the damn ocean, have no idea where they are for freaking weeks with just a little bit of food, and like they're sunburnt, their skin's peeling off, and people are just dead on the boat. Mm. And they gotta eat these people. I mean, they're gonna die. So it's the craziest thing ever. And this guy actually lived through something like that. Ay, yeah. Ay, ay. So, dude, you know, God bless this guy. He, yeah. I mean, we met him down in Birmingham, and he was a gentleman, and he had his coach with him. It was just him and one other guy. Uh, we asked if we could talk to him. He looked like he was, you know, having some time, Petite. having a little time with the, with the weight cut. Um, so, you know, we left him alone, but we did ask him if he would come on the show later on. And, and here he is. Sure enough. He, he came in and, uh, he, you know, he delivered his message and, and I hope he gets that, uh, Gazzoli fight. Is it Haim Gazzoli? Yeah. Haim Gazzoli. Haim Gazzoli. I don't even know how to pronounce the. I first think it's Chaim. 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 I think that's the proper way to say it. Chaim. Yeah. Chaim. yeah. Chaim. That's not even making fun. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure that's how you. No, say no, it. no, no. You do the. Uh, you do the Chaim Gazzoli, and uh, you know what? It, and as weird as it sounds, if two, if two professional athletes from Pakistan and Israel can bring their two nations together a little bit in camaraderie. Through a violent ass knuckle, a bare knuckle sport, which how ironic that sounds, you know, through yeah. this, through this beautiful violence inside the squared circle, these two gentlemen beat the living shit out of each other for, you know, five, five minute rounds and then hug it out at the end. They could show that, you know, it ain't all that fucking serious people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's, let's, can, let's bury the fucking hatchet and let's, uh, you know, they can make it. They can make a Jackson Pollock with their blood, you know? <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, so, you know, Mike, with that said, like, I, I feel like we put on a, a really good program tonight for everybody and, and like put a good message out with the Zatula. Uh, we were going to talk about some other things. Do we want to want to run over them real quick? Some like actual um, not so important. Up. Yeah. Some, you know, on a scale of importance compared to what the hell we just talked about for 55 minutes. Um, we got some fights coming up, mofos. Coming up June 26th, your boys, Mike and Mish, will be in Hollywood, California for BKFC 18. Look at this goddamn card, everyone. Yeah. You got. Joey, the Mexicutioner Beltran, and Sam, the Hillbilly Hammer Shoemaker in the main event, heavyweight title on the line. We got Luis Baboon Palomino versus Tyler El Tornado Goodjohn for the 155-pound title. You got Hector Lombard versus Joe, Joe Diesel Riggs for the 205 championship. They're just keeping that belt warm for our boy Lorenzo, I, I believe. You know what I mean? And then uh, Tiago Alves fighting Yuli, knock you out in three seconds. Diaz, the monster himself for the 175-pound title. Holy fucking shit, Mike. We're going to be there. I know. And then there's another 10 more fights on that card. So how about that? And And we found out just recently that, dude, let me bang, bro. Julian Lane is fighting uh, brutal Jake Brutal Bostwick. That's a banger. You got uh, Pearl Gonzalez making her debut 
Yep. Against Teresa Sagala. We mm -hmm. saw her live against uh, Taylor Starling in maybe the fight of the year. Yeah. Fight of the um, night performance at Knuckle Mania started the pay per view off and was like just an absolute banger. Yeah. Unbelievable. It was, they could not have, you know, kudos to the matchmakers, kudos to Nate Shook and whoever like lines up the fights because however they came up with putting Starling and Sagala as the opener for the pay-per-view, my God, did they hit a fucking grand slam with that oh, shit. Yeah. And you know, when Starling, her walkout, I mean that like, as soon as the music started uh, and she came out, her walkout and stuff, like it got everyone fired up and, and then she got that knockdown pretty quickly in the first round. I felt like, and uh, man, I thought it was over, but that was she, just the beginning. She, they, she they, rose they, from the ashes, man. Damn, man, that shit was awesome. Yeah. What else is on that card? I mean, I, I thought we were going to see some other people on that card. Um, you know, we had Naja on last week. She was supposed to be on that card, I thought, but now it's looking like she's going to be on the July card. Crystal, I believe, is going to be on that July card, hopefully, maybe maybe even later. Um just incredible, man. BKFC keeps putting on these. I'm, I'm going to put that image back up there. Like, just drink that in, everybody, man. Four title fights with absolute monsters in every single fight. Which one of those four are you most excited about, Mike? I am most excited to see Palomino versus Good John. Um, I think I'm just more intrigued. It yes, brings me the, like the most intrigue. Like I know Beltran versus Shoemaker, two heavyweights are going to be swinging. Someone could get knocked out with any. I mean, I guess in any fight, anybody can get knocked out with one punch. But you know what I mean. Heavyweights are heavyweights, man. They, they, you know, they, they, they're gonna, they're gonna be a banger. And you know, the other, the other guys too. But I don't know. Some about Palomino and Good John because I feel like everyone's like, oh, Palomino's gonna win. They're totally brushing off Good John. He has no shot. And I don't really think that's true. Now I'm not saying Palomino isn't gonna win. He's probably going to be the favorite. I'm almost positive about that. He might be like a plus 220 or something like that. What mm -hmm. do you think? Oh, no, I'm sure he is. I'm sure he, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if he's a, a heavy favorite, especially coming off of uh, Tyler Goodjohn's um, debut against Felony Bennett. I mean, Tyler had COVID the weeks before and, and like he didn't have a training camp and like he didn't have a corner. So he picked up Christine Faria and Lorenzo Hunt to corner him that night. Um, if anybody's sleeping on Tyler Goodjohn, you should go back and watch his his BKB fights because the dude's a savage. So I think that's going to be great. I think the Beltran Shoemaker fight is super interesting because, yeah. you know, Shoemaker keeps on guaranteeing a knockout. He says it's not going to go the distance. He's going to lay him down. But Beltran is a, you know, for a big man, he's a cardio machine and he can go all night and he's a banger. He He is all about dragging it in the deep waters and just making it fucking ugly. So that's another one. Uh, the Joe Riggs, Hector Lombard, which is the one that Joe Ivy is excited about. She just said that in the uh, comments, Lombard Riggs, that's her go-to. Honestly, I got another one for you. I got to tell you, dude, uh, of the, f I'm not even, I'm not being a dickhead here. That of the four title fights, is like my probably my fourth most excited one. I, I'm like, I'm very into, um, I'm very into the Palomino Good John fight, the the heavyweight title fight. But then the Yuli Diaz mystery because we have not seen him enough in the in the ring. Yeah, you know, he 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 knocked his last opponent out in three seconds. You know what I mean? And the and the fight before that didn't go too long. So. You got Yuli the Monster Diaz. He's another success story coming off of a bad childhood and eight, you know, he did like an eight year stretch in jail or something like that. Yuli got out of prison and fucking made a career out of it, you know, became a professional bare knuckle, became a professional boxer, turned it into bare knuckle boxing. Mm -hmm. And now he's fighting a guy that once fought GSP for the goddamn title in the UFC. Tiago Alves might be the most established fighter on that entire card. So of the four, I say Palomino Goodjohn's my number one. My number two is the heavyweights. Number three is Alves Diaz. And then my number four would be Riggs and Lombard. If that's the, that's the way I would just, I, maybe my mind will get changed on, like as we get closer. Yeah. 
But as of right now, on uh, June third, twenty three days out from the event, that's how I stand with the uh, with the card. I, I have one that's not on that poster, and obviously we talk, talked about a couple. But uh, Jared Grant versus Travis Thompson oh. is also on that card. So, whoa. Holy Whoa. shit, dude. I forgot about that one. And that might be the fucking one to watch. That might be the people's main event right there. Yeah. As, we're, we're as they say. We're, those are two guys. And I believe the top three, right? Top three. Right. In that the the so winner far. of that will be next in line for the 135 pound title. Yeah, they must be. Now, Dat Nguyen is the champ. Somebody keeps calling Reggie. him out. Reggie Barnett. So mm -hmm. it's good. They are going to have to settle that. Dad they have to. And Reggie have to settle that. The winner of that Travis Thompson, Jared Kid Gotti Grant fight will fight the winner of that. Guaranteed. I feel the same way about Reggie that I feel about Lorenzo. Me too. Love same him. way. And, but I also think that he's, uh, he is owed a title. He needs a title shot. He, he, he's there. He's ready for but it. But I also think like skill wise, he is yes. so, he is so, so good. Good. Yes. He is so goddamn good in every aspect of his game. And just like Lorenzo, like, like you just watch them train, you watch them fight and like everything is so technically proficient. They're, you know, powerful. They're, they're just something, there's something to watch. They are a draw and they are, they have both been there, you know, since the start of the BKFC. So how great would it be if Reggie Barnett, and Lorenzo Hunt both got their hands on a title at some point in the near future. It would be great. It would be great for like their day one guys, right, to get some straps around their belt. Around oh, their homegrown, waist. they homegrown stars. They need yeah. homegrown stars. They need names. Uh, they can build a company. Dude, on. hold on, hold on. Okay, you just said the word homegrown. Homegrown. Okay. Yeah. Can we talk about this for a second? All right. Um, I've been watching some other shows, and they've been shitting on the matchmaking. And I hope, and I really do hope these guys are watching because they've been shitting on the matchmaking and you're like, oh, fucking Paige Van Zandt versus Rachel Otsovich doesn't make any sense. How does it not make any sense? They fought each other once already in the UFC. One of them's 0-1, uh, the other one's 0-0. They're both the UFC pretty faces that really have no business fighting anybody else in the BKFC right now. So just put them up against each other and draw fucking pay-per-view numbers. It makes perfect sense. One, um, two, homegrown. The argument for all these people is put, let them fight. Let the homegrown, let, let the homegrown talent get the fights. Let the homegrown talent get the yeah. fights. Louis Palomino was in, was in MMA before. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, you know, Joey Beltran had a very long MMA, like every single guy that is in the BKFC right now has a history in yeah. some other organization in some other sport right now. So you cannot keep calling them homegrown talent when they had a fucking career in another organization fighting in another sport. So knock that shit off. Think about it in a business sense, make the fucking matches that make the most sense, like to make the most sense to grow the business. Keep pulling fucking audiences in. Do you think that if they put Paige Van Zant against, I don't know, fucking some other chick that they're not going to sell the same numbers that they would with Rachel Ostevich. No, like, I don't know, man. I just don't get that. I don't get that mindset, my, that, that state of mind that these people are in, man. Like everyone's got a background. Tiago Alves, yep. fucking Johnny Bedford had an MMA background. Are you, are you telling me that Johnny Bedford is homegrown? Cause he's fucking not. Yeah, I, I think the company they they need people that have those started with the company to grow with you know with the company so that they can build that company on a name, you know. Uh but right now they need stars that can take their fans and their following to the sport. And I don't know why this is a thing, because I feel like today uh, uh they was talking about they were talking about something on the BKFC podcast and um they I was kind of talking to the, the phone as though they could hear me. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was talking to the phone like they could hear me. And um, I, I feel like they, they <sighs> just don't, for some reason, fighters don't like the Paige Van Zandt thing. 
half they of me it. understands it. it. I, I like, and I'm just using her as a prime example because she's like the biggest signing so far. You know, that's their biggest name signing, you know, most popular, whatever. But the thing is, is that when you see, when you go back and you look at like, oh, hey, BKFC one, BKFC two, three, four, how many people were following BKFC then? You know what I mean? And you look at the following and it slowly grows, grows, grows. But when she comes in, <coughs> she's bringing a million people who might not have seen BKFC one time. And they might all, or ha even if half of them, even if 500,000, even if a quarter of 250,000 people watch one BKFC because they're fans of her, out of that 250, if 20,000 people remain fans, you just got 20,000 more followers for your uh, product for your show so your product that's that what just you need to look years, at because then that, they became your fan after that right your product that just hit three years of existence right you th think about how big this sport has become in three years of existence and do you think that this sport would have gotten to where it was without chris lieben do you think that this sport would have gotten to where it was right now without Paige van zandt i'm saying yes what you do is you build these cards to showcase your your homegrown talent. Yes, you got even, but even, like go through the Taylor Starling's not homegrown, right? But uh, I mean, but she doesn't have many fights though. But I mean, but they fought like Christine. They fought, but Christine they're, they're Perea has known. fights. It has had fights in Invicta and like yes, they, they're not they're, known. They're building them as stars. Yes, they're building them as stars, but. It's not like they never fought anywhere else before. It's just like that shit is just like getting on my nerves now. I, I don't know. Like, okay, are they going to get pissed off that they signed uh, Vandalay Silva? Because they got news to break next Thursday. Yeah. And, and according to David Feldman, next Thursday's uh, news is going to blow your minds. You guys are going to be so excited. Honestly, who is it? I mean, is it going to be Vandalay Silva? Is it going to be Vitor Belfort? Is it going to be Vandalay Silva versus Chris Lieben coming out of retirement in July? It could very well be that. Are you going to get pissed off? Is it going to be Diego Sanchez? Is it going to be Diego Sanchez coming in at 165 pounds fighting Jim Ehlers or Elvin Brito? Are you going to get mad about that because Diego Sanchez is a UFC guy and you're bringing in a UFC guy and he's going to fight Elvin Brito? No, you're going to get fucking pumped up that Diego Sanchez is about to fight Elvin Brito. You yeah. know what I mean? It doesn't oh, yeah. make it. Yeah. So, you know, enough with That's the fucking <laughs> enough with that bullshit. Let them keep doing what they're doing. They're doing just fine. And, and they're building this thing at a rapid pace. So everything they're doing is working. Stop questioning the process and let it fucking play through. Just let it go. Let it ride. Get these fans in there, you know? Yeah. That's what you got to do. <sighs> yeah. Sorry. Every time, it seems like one, it seems like once a week I go on a fucking rant now, dude. I don't know. Rants are good. Rants are good, Mike. Rants, Rants are good. Are hey, good. hey, and let's round out the show with this. We got a UFC event this weekend. You got Jardino Rosenstruck. Mm-hmm. Versus Alexio Sakai. Yeah, I'm super excited for that one. Um, we actually uh, hold on. I got the whole card here because our boy Leo, and I know Joe uh, Joe Ivy is excited to hear that name. Leo sent me the whole card. You got Walt <laughs> Harris, Marcin Tibera. You got Santiago Ponsonavio on that card against Miguel Baez. Uh, you got Tom Breezy's on that card. You got Montella de, uh, Montana De La Rosa versus uh, Arena Lip Lipsky. I always suck at names, dude. Arena <laughs> Lipsky. You got Tanner Boz, uh, Tanner Bozer on there versus Alir Latifi, Latifi coming back. So really? I mean, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of decent card uh, fights on this card. Yeah, so, you know, so pay attention. You got UFC to watch this weekend. Anza Nibio. Someone check his blood pressure. I'm calm. I'm calming down now. I'm sorry. What else you got to say, Mike? We're done. Jordan for Levitt. Jordan Levitt. <laughs> Jordan Levitt. Yeah, that's going to do the splits. Yeah, his cousin's Joseph Gordon Levitt. So that's, it's not true. Hey, man. <laughs> we did it. Um, yo, so next Wednesday, we have David Morgan coming on the show, coming on uh, Mission Accomplished. Yeah, hopefully he's got some news. 
Yeah, we got David Morgan and my cousin Jeremy oh. coming on. And next Thursday, put, mark it on your calendars, ladies and gentlemen. Christine Misfit Faria mm -hmm. and Charles Felony Bennett. Misfit Holy and felony. Holy shit. It's not every day you get a misfit and a felon on the uh on the same show with the two same morons that you're looking at right now. <laughs> yep. So right. yeah. So, anyways, man, uh anything else, Mike? Nah, man. I'm good. Looking forward to next week. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. I hope you guys had your eyes opened a little bit by Isatula Kakar tonight. Uh, anybody with any kind of connections to any kind of manage, uh, management uh, groups, you know, get a hold of them and, you know, tell them to get a hold of that guy because we need to get him fucking paid and get him, get him a decent management team, you know, and, and get him the most success he can possibly get. Yeah, he needs uh, it. Let's do yeah. it. Let's get yeah. this. Let's get this guy friggin' management. All right. Peace out. <laughs>